He met her at a party. She was so outstanding that many guys chased after her, while he was average looking, shy and awkward. At the end of the party, he finally summoned some courage to invite the girl to have coffee with him. She was surprised, but out of politeness, she accepted his invitation to go on a date. They both sat in a nice coffee shop, he was too nervous to say anything, she felt uncomfortable, waiting for coffee. With him being so shy and awkward around her, it seemed like the conversation between them would never start. The coffee was brought and suddenly, he asked the waiter. Would you please get me some salt? I'd like to put it in my coffee. Everyone at the cafe stared at him with a strange look. His face turned red, but still, he put the salt in his coffee and drank it. She asked him curiously, why this unusual habit? He took a couple of sips and replied, when I was a little boy, I lived near the sea, I liked playing in the sea, I could feel the taste of the sea, just like the taste of the salty coffee. Now every time I have the salty coffee, I always think of my childhood, think of my hometown, I miss my hometown so much, I miss my parents who are still living there. While saying that tears filled his eyes. She was deeply touched. That's his true feeling, from the bottom of his heart. A man who can tell out his homesickness must be a man who loves home, cares about home, and has realized his responsibility for his family. She then started talking about her childhood, her faraway hometown, and her family. That was a really nice talk, also a beautiful beginning of their love story. They continued to date. She found that actually, he was a man who meets all her demands, he had tolerance, was kind-hearted, warm, and careful. He was such a good man, and had it not been for the salt in the coffee, she'd never have really known him. The rest of the story was like any other beautiful love story, they finally got married and lived a very happy married life. And sure, every time she made coffee for him, she put some salt in the coffee, just the way he liked it. After 40 years of marital bliss, he died after a short illness. One day, she found a letter he had left for her which said, My dearest, please forgive me, forgive my whole life's lie. This was the only lie I said to you, the salty coffee. Remember the first time we dated? I was so nervous at that time, actually, I wanted some sugar, but I said salt. It was hard for me to change, so I just went ahead. I never thought that could be the start of our communication. I tried to tell you the truth many times in my life, but I was too afraid to do that, as I have promised not to lie to you for anything. Now I'm dying, so I tell you the truth, I don't like salty coffee, what a strange bad taste. But I have had the salty coffee for my whole life. Since I knew you, I never felt sorry for anything I do for you. Having you with me is the most immense happiness for my whole life. If I can live for the second time, I still want to know you and have you for my entire life, even though I have to drink the salty coffee again. Please forgive me, darling. For lying to you first in that coffee shop and then not telling you the truth every time you made coffee for me. I am not lying now when I say, I couldn't have that coffee any other way. Still madly in love with you. Tears fell down her cheek as she finished reading the letter. If anybody asks her, how did that salted coffee taste? It's sweet. She always replied. Next story, Balloon Exercise, Our Happiness is with Others. Everyone wants to find happiness in life. No matter what our circumstances, and no matter what hand we are dealt, the search for true contentment is at the heart of everyone's goals. The question, then, is how? How are we supposed to begin looking for it? A group of people gathered in a room attending a seminar about life and happiness to learn to find happiness in their lives. They were being taught various skills and lessons about life. Suddenly, the speaker stopped and started giving each person a balloon. He asked everyone to write one's name on it using a pen. All the balloons were then collected and taken to another room. Now, these delegates were let in that room and asked to find the balloon which had their name written, within five minutes. Everyone was frantically searching for their name, pushing, colliding with each other, and there was utter chaos. 
No one could find their balloons within the given five-minute time and they all had to return to the other room empty-handed. Then they were told to go to the other room and randomly collect a balloon and give it to the person whose name was written on it. Within five minutes everyone was carrying the balloon with their name on it. The speaker began, this is exactly happening in our lives. Everyone is frantically looking for happiness all around, not knowing where it is. Our happiness lies in the happiness of other people. Give them their happiness, you will get your own happiness. And this is the purpose of human life. The next story, Race of Life. It is hard not to desire victory in all your endeavors when the world seems so competitive and ruthless, especially if you're a boy growing up with those values. A boy grew up in a similar environment where winning was all that was valued, and he longed to succeed. The boy was good at running, so he called everyone in the nearby villages for a race. A large group of people from around came to see this exciting event. The boy had been training hard for this race. He ran among the strongest boys from around the villages, and it looked like heat on a finish line, but the young boy came out victorious. The crowd went wild with delight as they cheerfully waved banners praising him. The boy loved the attention. It made him feel happy and vital. There were several types of races, sprint, long distances, relays etc. The boy was unbeatable in all the races he competed in. The crowd loved him even more after each victory, they clapped with excitement. The boy felt very proud of his accomplishments. But among the crowd was a wise older man who did not seem as impressed with the boy's fleets as the rest. Just as the boy thought all the races for the day were over. The old man shouted from the crowd, there is one more race left, the most important one. The boy was initially surprised by the additional race, but he was confident he could win any race. The old man brought two new competitors for the boy, a blind man and a frail old lady. What type of race is this? I can easily win them, the boy exclaimed. The most important one, said the old man. So, the boy ran the race as he knew he would win this time too. When the boy crossed the finish line, the blind man was still at the start, and the old lady had just started to move. The boy was triumphant, and he raised his hands in ecstasy after his victory when he noticed that the crowd wasn't cheering. To his disbelief, the crowd was very silent. No one was clapping or cheering for his win. The boy was shocked. So, he asked the old man what had happened. The old man said, let's start the race again, but all three of you finish together this time. The boy raced again, but he helped and guided the blind man, supported the old lady, and walked along with her this time. Finally, all three crossed the finish line together. The crowd cheered and clapped, which may have been louder than any earlier. The boy was confused. Who is the crowd cheering? All three of them finished the race together. So, he asked the old man, who is the winner of this race? Who is the crowd cheering for? The wise old man put his hands around the boy's shoulders and answered, Boy, you have won much more in this race than any other race you have ever run, and in this race, the crowd is not cheering for any winners. Moral. What are you running for in your life? Do you desire success? Is victory the only dimension for you in your life? Is your action just to win over everyone? At the end of your life, it is not whether you won the race but whom did you run next to? Were they weaker, older or disadvantaged? Did you help them to the finish line, or were you just concerned about your wins? Because life is not all about winning, it is about moving together and helping others who are less fortunate than us. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel and like this video. Thank you very much.